you guys, thank you for that carrier update. Right now, we're going to welcome Blythe Brumley, host of Cyberly, to the show this morning. And Blythe, we've got no short order today, talking about the analysis of the mind behind Mark Zuckerberg. So thank you for joining us. And I just want to get right into it. I want to know your thoughts. Let's do it, because Mark Zuckerberg is kind of just one of those weird, I guess, CEOs and founders of a company. You never really hear much from him. You only really hear sort of snippets and, and, and interesting insight from him. But he sat down with Joe Rogan for a three-hour interview, and he talked about you know Facebook as a company or Meta as their main company now and how he thinks about the future and how he thinks about you know the, the metaverse, his own version of the metaverse and what he thinks that should look like and the hardware that's powering it and also creating experiences not only in his future metaverse but also on his current platforms that he owns right now so whatsapp instagram facebook and how he thinks around content moderation you know we've talked a bunch especially on freight waves now about the the issues around content moderation and it was really interesting to hear his perspective on all of those things on how he's essentially shaping the the global conversation around you know the hot topic the the water cooler topics that that are happening in every country all around the world. So it was a really interesting interview that I've, I haven't heard him speak at this length. And I came away with it with almost feeling a little bit better towards Mark Zuckerberg in a weird way than I was before. And I, I think that that's ultimately, you know, a positive for him and, and ultimately what he's building as far as like the PR around it. But it was still, you know, kind of a you know, whew, are we okay with giving this person this much control over the global conversation and where we spend our attention online? So I think of the original intention behind Facebook, right? And the Facebook founding story of just something that was created literally to link common people at a college, at a university. And now we're talking about this entire global force, which, as you said, controls the conversation, the global online conversation, because they are such a huge conglomerate. Was there any type of indication of Zuckerberg's feelings towards how this grew and kind of just the scope that Facebook is at right now? Because I'm sure when he was a college kid sitting around creating this, there was no expectation that this was going to turn out this way. 100% because he was building it as a place just for Harvard. So he went to Harvard and he built this, you know, with a couple other co-founders um, who are no longer, you know, I guess related to the company. They ended up having a big falling out. But he uh, developed this and he kind of saw it as, well, you know, this is eventually going to be a big thing. You know, it's a, it's a thing right now for Harvard and we want to create it. But then he noticed and he started paying attention to, you know, different colleges that wanted in on this different, you know, a Facebook for their college. So he said he would start to launch like two colleges at a time and he would do it at night on in his off time. And then he would go and talk about it with his friends. It was kind of like a normal, like a little side hustle for him. And then it turned into, you know, when people left college, they were still using it. And that's when he knew that he kind of had something. And so it just developed from there. And it, it sort of evolved into this thing that he never thought you know, his company would be the one to sort of take off because he talks about, you know, it, it, around this time, there were other platforms that that were still this, sort of the dominant king in this space. It was Google, it was Yahoo, um, even some competitors like Friendster um, were coming around. And so he thought that one of those companies would take off or, you know, eventually like Google or Yahoo would build their own social media platform, kind of like Facebook. But then he just, they kind of looked at it as almost a fad or had, he, he kind of theorizes that Google and Yahoo looked at it as a fad and so he was the one that just really like built it like brick by brick and then eventually it turned into this global phenomenon where it's it's all in all countries all ages you know you don't have to be in college anymore obviously to be on Facebook and that's how the platform has evolved and he never and he really struggles I think another takeaway from this interview is that he really struggles with the content moderation side of things and that you know he takes a different approach versus you know how Twitter tr treats you know news stories and things like that and how they award you know, they have more of like an independent uh, sourcing company that comes in and independent fact checkers. So it's not Facebook making these determinations on what should be shared and what shouldn't be shared. And so it's, it's a really, really fascinating deep dive in, into the person that really controls a platform that has, you know, billions of users all over the globe. And you wonder where it's going to stop. And it really, with his development into the metaverse, I don't know that it's going to stop. I think it's just going to transition into another type of virtual world.
And Blythe, when you talk about Mark Zuckerberg, you mentioned a great point that there's a lot of power within one person really can being able to control conversation or content moderation. Where's that delicate balance? Because it almost seems like every time I hear someone talk about Facebook or what's going on on social media, there is no happy parties about anything that's happening. They're just saying something's getting suppressed or something's just, you know, fake news or anything like that. So we're looking at that content moderation aspect. Is there any winning formula in your mind, um, you know, just making the most popular stories at the top? Or is there just something that's just always something that's going to have someone upset about what's being shown? It's the latter part, exactly what you just said. It's always going to have some, somebody is always going to be upset. And he mentions that it's particularly a U.S. problem where Facebook exists in these countries all over the globe, but the polarization is really a factor in the U.S. Where polar, compared to other countries where polarization is either reach, already reached its height and declining compared to the U.S. where he kind of theorizes where it's because of our two-party system, where it's kind of like, you know, one side versus the other side versus other countries where they sort of have open primaries and it's open discussion. And so he mentions that it's a, a uniquely U.S. problem that we essentially fight with each other all day long using these social media apps. And then he goes on and, and talks about the how they treat misinformation and what counts as misinformation and what counts as because, you know, it could be in one political party's eyes, you know, a story could be misinformation, whereas the other side, it's, oh, I'm getting shadow banned. They're, they're keeping me from from spreading the truth. And so they have two different levels of, of how they sort of parse through the information. And one side of it is that they look at it is, you know, is, is somebody going to suffer, you know, violent consequences from this? Is, is, is that, you know, child pornography, things like that? That's on one bucket. And then the other bucket is they really just want the news to just be released to everybody if it's not harmful to the audience. Say, you know, a, a perfect example that they used in the show was the Flat Earthers who believe that, you know, the, there's a uh, flat earth and that space is fake. And so how do you do you let people talk about that? And Zuckerberg's position was is yet, yes, you let people talk about it, but you don't let people talk or you you slow down the, I, I guess, the reach of the story. And so he mentioned several different stories where they award like almost like a point system on on whether or not this story, yes, you can share it to the platform, but is it going to reach your greater audience? You know, other people um, that, that that are showing up in the feed. And so it's kind of this, this yin and this yang of like how you're going to approach it. But I do think that how they're approaching it is probably the smartest way to go. And especially when it comes to fact checking, using those independent fact checkers in order to come in and make those determinations on if a story is true or not. You don't want somebody like Mark Zuckerberg or, or any really anybody else being that sole person that decides if a story is real or not. So I, I like the idea of having the independent fact checker but there is sort of just this greater nuance to how do you parse through all of the data because spam is a real issue. The bot problem is a real issue across all social media platforms. And so how do they treat, you know, a business that just wants to spam and post, you know, 20 times in a row so they stay in your feed versus somebody who maybe just had a baby and you really want to see that over a spamming business that's posting 20 times in a row in a matter of five minutes. So there's this balance that needs to happen with an algorithm and then parsing it through two different sort of funnel systems of is this violence or is this going to incite violence versus misinformation. The other interesting thing too, Blythe, that I think that we need, we, we could honestly spend an entire podcast episode on talking about the difference between freedom of speech restrictions, which a lot of folks think there are, versus the fact that Facebook is a private company, so they're not the government limiting your free speech. It's such an interesting conversation, something that I definitely think that we need to talk about as well but we're out of time. So where can we find Cyberly and more of your thoughts on Mark Zuckerberg tomorrow? Sure. So we're going to be covering this a little bit more in depth, including the roles and how they're going to be shifting in, in Mark Zuckerberg's new sort of metaverse world. So we're going to be covering that in tomorrow's Cyberly. We are live every Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, Blythe, we will catch you then here on Bright Waves TV. Right now, we're going to head back over to Sydney Edwards for a full look at our top stories this morning.